What's up guys, GT here and welcome back to the channel once again. Now, if you've known me well, you'll probably know that I've been a huge Bon Jovi fan since my early childhood and in fact, Bon Jovi was the, one of the first bands that I started listening to when I got into the whole rock and roll scene. Uh, you Give Love a Bad Name is one of my favorite tracks from the band and back in the day, I was kind of privileged enough or lucky enough to find you know, isolated guitar tracks of that particular song and I did do a cover on my channel as well. Uh, I was a complete tone noob at that point in time. I just quickly dialed in a tone which sounded right to my ears. But I think right now is a good time to kind of revisit that tone and share with you some of the secrets that I hear when I hear the isolated guitar track. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna play you the isolated guitar tracks both for the lead and the rhythm tracks from Richie Sambora and we're gonna break it down and we're gonna dial in something which sounds kind of close to it. Now keep in mind what you're gonna hear right now in terms of the isolated tracks is layers and layers of compression you know, caused by the internet and by YouTube as well. So what you're hearing is probably not the exact studio takes. Uh, it's probably gonna be a little, you know, compressed uh, just because it's traveled so much through the internet. But it's gonna give you a fair amount of idea as to what the tone is sounding like. And there's a specific thing that I really wanna talk about when you talk about the tone. So let's pray to the YouTube gods that I don't get a copyright claim on this video. And let's listen to the lead isolated track from Richie Sambora. Now I don't know if you could hear it but I can clearly hear there's a specific unique sound that's going on with that isolated track. Uh, it almost feels like double guitars being played and I hope you heard that too. Let's jump into the axe edit and let's dial it in. All right guys, so I've got Axe Edit loaded in front of me and instead of starting with a blank preset this time, we're starting with something which I've already dialed in just to save time because you've got two presets to cover. We'll cover the lead preset first and then jump into the rhythm preset. So let's look at the preset first. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through each of the blocks and each of the things that I've used in there. Again, as I said, this is ballpark. This is something that I dialed in by ear. Now, Richie, if you know, uh, has been known to use Marshall amps. If you just Google his gear, you'll quickly find out that he used to use a JCM 2000 and a JCM 800 during his times. But I think I found the JVM, you know, model in the Axe FX2 quite close to the sound. A uh, lot of Marshall amps in the Axe FX2, but I think JVM is you know, the first choice that comes to my mind whenever it comes to high gain tones. So I've dialed in a Brit JVM OD1 Orange here, fair amount of gain, as I said, the input drive is set to run 5.6, uh, bass is low, mid is low, fairly low, and uh, treble is high and the presence is boosted up quite a lot because we want a really bright tone as you heard in the isolated track. Master volume set to run 4.5 and the level I'll come to in a minute is set to run minus 11 right now. Uh, nothing else has changed in the amp. The cab is actually a Marshall cab, I believe. This is a Greenback pre-roller uh, F069 4x12 cab. Any Marshall cab would sound great. Um, it's mic'd up with a 57 dynamic, uh, approximately 2.5. Uh, it brings the mic a bit closer to the cab so you'll get a more warmer response. Uh, low cut is 80, high cut all the way up. I'm not cutting off any of the top end here. Also in the room section, I have a fair amount of room level kind of set in. Uh, just, I want to try something different this time just to give it more of a studio or room sort of a feel in there. So I added some, a uh, lot of room level. Uh, air is around 10% with 80 to 100 hertz uh, is the frequency. Use headphones for these settings. You will clearly understand what's going on. Next is a chorus 80 style because we are doing an 80 style tone. <laughs> nothing else, nothing very fancy there. Uh, tempo set to one, the tempo is around 123 BPM. Low mix, 10% mix, I just added a little bit of modulation to make it smooth, but that's not the modulation we're talking about. We'll come back to that in a second. Tone is set to around, uh, the tone section is uh, high cut 20K all the way up, dimension mode high, the way I usually do it. Delay is a mono tape, uh, quarter tempo. EQ, I always cut on the high cut so that the repeats are in the background. Reverb is a London plate because I feel that London plate works really well when it comes to the 80 sort of tone. Quality set to high, mix is 20%, nothing very fancy going on here. Again, everything by ear and this is how the tone sounds at this point in time. I'm playing full volume, full tone 
on the bridge pickup. That sounds nice in itself, doesn't it? That's a pretty good tone, so you can use this preset as it is if you want to, but it's still missing that modulation that I was talking about. And what is that modulation, you might be asking me now. That modulation is actually an octave uh, modulation that has been added on top of the actual guitar signal. So he might have used a Digitech Whammy. Uh, you know, if you're a guitar player, you probably know what I'm talking about. So basically what is been done is you take the guitar signal and you push it by an octave up and you kind of mix it with the original guitar signal. So the Axe FX2 does have a pitch block in there which can be used to get that sort of a octave effect that I was talking about. It's called the classic whammy type in the pitch block. What we're going to do is add in the pitch block to get that effect. Now there are multiple places you can add it in. You can actually add it in different places on the signal chain depends on where you add it, you, your sound is going to be slightly different. But in my case, it sounds best between the amp and the cab. But what we're going to do is not actually add it into the original signal chain, we're going to add it in parallel. What that's actually going to do is allow the signal chain to split up into two branches from the amp and one branch is going to go into the pitch and the other is going to be your normal signal which is the tone you heard earlier. So what you do is after connecting that pitch block is actually attach it back into the signal chain. So now your signal chain is kind of splitting into two halves right after the amp. One is going into the pitch and coming back to the cab and the amp can directly go to the cab as well. So once you do that, what's going to happen uh, is obviously when you do things in parallel, the trick is to, oh, let me change this to first classic whammy. You don't want to do tune. Classic whammy, high cut all the way up, uh, low cut to 80 Hertz. And then what I did is also turn the mix up to 100% because we are in parallel. Now you can use the level to actually adjust and uh, create the sort of a tone as per taste what you want. I kind of like it at default, which is at uh, zero dB. So it's kind of a fair mix between the sort of the dry signal and sort of the wet signal as well. So this is how it sounds after adding the uh, whammy blocks. <laughs> That sounds nice. Let's listen, uh, let's listen to the other part. That sounds really cool, doesn't it? So that's pretty much the solo tone. And I, I think the same kind of trick is being applied in the uh, rhythm section as well, but the trick is slightly different over there. But before we actually go ahead and do the rhythm preset as well, let's hear the isolated track of the rhythm tone as well so that we can kind of adjust our ears and create that tone as well. So this is how the rhythm tone sounds. <laughs> So this is the rhythm preset that we have over here. Uh, I've got a basic tone setup again, and I'm gonna quickly walk you through the different things I've done over here. The amp is again, uh, Bridge JVM. Uh, I'm not gonna to touch on all of these settings. They're pretty much similar to what we had in the lead preset as well. The cab is slightly different. I think I used a TV mix in this case, uh, F131, uh, low cuts like that, high cuts like that. Room is again something similar to what we had in the lead, pre lead preset. Chorus, I believe is exactly the same. Now in the reverb, what I've done is done an 80 sort of trick again, where it's actually in parallel and the quality is set to high and the mix is 100%. And what it follows it with is a mixer, which is actually panning the reverb all the way to the left. Now in typical cases, you would also have the guitar, the dry guitar panned all the way right, but that gets a bit too extreme for me. So I've kept it like that. The, the dry signal is, you know, dead spot on in the center and the reverb is kind of panned all the way to the left. So this is how the preset actually sounds. <laughs> I 
again great tone fat thick that's the way we like it but you know it's missing that key element which is the modulation so let's go ahead and add that uh we're going to add the pitch block and use the whammy effect again but this time it's going to be slightly subtle and not that you know sharp as it was actually in the lead track so let's go ahead and add the pitch block again and connect back the dots as we did in the lead preset as well and now this time what we're going to do is choose whammy as usual um, high cut all the way up low cut 80 hertz and uh, i think makes 100 percent but this time to settle the effect down what i did is actually brought the level down to minus 3 db so that it's not that prominent but it's there and it does make a difference so hear this part out <laughs> That sounds nice, doesn't it? Well, that's pretty much it. Those are the two presets that I wanted to cover in this video. What do you guys think? Does it sound really close to the actual isolated tracks that you heard? Let me know in the comments down below, please. I always appreciate your feedback. And in case you aren't subscribed to the channel yet, please go ahead and do so. It does help me grow. And until I see you guys in the next video, make sure you stay safe. Keep rocking, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.